Today we take a look at something different from the Unify range, and that is the Unify Smart Floodlight. Now we all know Unify for their networking products and their CCTV products, but this is something different in the Unify Protect range. So let's take a look at how smart the Smart Floodlight really is. For the unit itself, it's powered by PoE 802.3AF, it gives 550 lumens of LED light and it detects from up to 5 meters away. A little bit later in this video, we're going to put those 5 meters to the test and see if they really work. Also, we'll test it in the daytime and the nighttime to see if there's any difference. The light itself is also IPX5 rated, which means it can resist a sustained low pressure water jet spray. So in a nutshell, if you put it out in the rain, it should be okay. We start with having a look at what comes inside the box and also how you set it up. Remember, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and like and comment if you've enjoyed this video at the end. Let's jump straight in. So if we go ahead and open this one, let's uh, just get my knife. That is the unit itself. Uh, it comes with a couple of mounts. So there's just some information about the smart floodlight in here. There is a bracket, so this looks like the angled bracket, so if it's on the wall it's going to be pointing downwards, so you can see that one there. Um, under here we have a diffuser, so if the light is bright or you obviously want it to um, dull down a bit, you can use the diffuser, so we'll have a look at that shortly. And the unit itself, uh, it's fairly weighty, um, it's not the lightest, but Obviously you want something that's gonna be bright. So we have the PoE connector at the back here and we have a reset switch just here. To, it looks like to take the, um, this one off, you would just push that way and it comes off. And then you can replace it with the diffused version. So it's entirely up to you whichever one you want to use, they're replaceable. Uh, let's have a look at what else is in the box. Just a QR code and a get started guide. And then we have the flat mount. So depending on where you're mounting it, if you want it flat against the, the wall or wherever you're mounting it, or you want it in a down angle, depending on the height, you can choose one or the other. Both of these come with the spirit level so you can make sure they're aligned straight or they're straightly lined up against the wall. And there's some screws in the bottom of this. So you've got four screws. Uh, four wall plugs and there's a tiny screw just in here. I'm going to assume that this is for once you've connected this up. You can put that little screw in here and obviously it will stop it coming out. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at how you set this up. We're in Unify Protect now and we're going to go ahead and add the device. So just like any others you would go to the top right hand corner Actually, just before I do that, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so it's visible. Let's go ahead and add the device. So it comes up here and you can see it finds it straight away. So this is going to be, I don't know, back garden, for example. Um, click add device. Now, this is where you run through the setup quickly and add any pairing. You can choose any of your cameras to be used as a trigger. So for example, you can have your front doorbell. So if this was at the front door, when there's a motion at your front door, the, lights tr the light triggers basically. Um, so for now, I'm gonna leave that at none, but if you wanna set that up, you can pick one of these. Uh, motion detection area, so how long you want the flood light to stay on for. Um, you can go all the way up to 15 minutes. It'd be good if you could actually type in the specific time. Um, I don't know how particularly you need, but if it was 1 minute 30, for example, you needed, you would have to go to 5 minutes because that's the next one. Um, for now, again, we'll leave it at 15 seconds. Um, next one is how you um, want the light schedule to be. So you can schedule it so you can have it on motion or you can have it always on when it's dark. Um, for the motion part of it, you can go down below and again, you can choose always. Um, an example we're going to look at a little bit later in this video is obviously doing it in day and night um, or if you want it to just happen when it's night time you can do that as well. You can pick up the motion sensitivity so we can leave that at 100%. Um, for now if you find that it is too sensitive again you can turn this down and we go ahead and click next and there we go. Um, it's as simple as that to get the floodlight added. Once it is added if you want to go back and change any of the settings you can click on the device itself and you can have a quick look. So just gonna show you 
So you can probably see this bright little light facing. Um, so this is the, uh, the floodlight. Um, it's going to shut off automatically in four seconds. You can see it here, it times it down straight away. Um, so that should shut off. Oh, it's picked up another motion. So let's turn that off anyway. Um, you can choose the different levels of brightness uh, accordingly. So you can turn that on, turn that off, the different levels of brightness. So I don't know how much you can probably see on this on the camera, but that's the lowest setting uh, all the way up to the brightest setting. So you can see a little bit, it's not too much. So let's go ahead and turn that off and put that back. Down here below, you've got the MAC address, the connection speed, um, what firmware version it's running, the IP address has been given, etc., etc. So just the general info. Um, and then we go to general and we have details. So if you want to rename it, you can do. Um, give it a different name if you've moved the position. Whether you want the LED on the front, on or off. And again, you can change your pairing of your camera here. So if, for example, at the start that you chose that you didn't want to do it, you can now go ahead and pair it with something after. In terms of lighting, so these are those settings that we had a quick look at earlier. Um, it's exactly all here, so you can change the, if you find that the motion is too sensitive, you can turn that down. Um, if you want the longer timer, you can change that. So it's entirely up to you. Uh, last but not least, there's manage. So you can locate the device, um, and what that will do is the LED will flash for 30 seconds. Um, it's not the small LED, uh, the little blue LED, it's the actual full LED, it will flash um, and you can locate your device. If you want to send a reboot command, you can do that from here. And last but not least is unmanage. So not too much to look at in the UI interface, fairly simple and easy to set up. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what it looks like on the mobile device as well. So this is the mobile, so this is the protect app that you can see in the middle. You can see the back garden is down below, so you can just press power on and power off. Probably just see that turning on and off there. You can change the brightness straight away. And if you go into it, you have everything in here. So name, connection speed, about, and the light schedule. So these are just exactly the same settings we saw on the, um, on the UI interface, so you can change that all on here. Let's go ahead now and set this up outside and see what this looks like in a real life scenario. So we're outside now and we're come to test the light and to see how it actually works in real life. So I've actually installed this on a post up here somewhere. So just here you can see that's just turned on. Um, I am having some construction work done so please ignore this, ignore the mess in the garden. Um, so that light is now set up from there. So you're going to see two camera shots. You're going to see one of me walking towards it um, so you can see what sort of distance, what sort of distance I am from it and you can see another one on when the light actually triggers. So currently what we have is the 45 degree angled bracket. So I don't know if you can see that one just there. So it's facing down at the moment. So it'd be good to see what sort of range it does pick up at. It does say five meters, but let's put that to the test. I'm gonna walk down this path. The post is literally right next to me. You can probably see me in the other camera just pointing to it just then. Um, and I'm gonna walk along here I'd say approximately about where the chair is, is where the five meter mark is. So let's have a quick look and see how quick this turns on. So the light is currently on at the moment. I know it is daytime, so it might be a little bit harder to see, but the light is on at the moment. So as soon as that turns off, I'll walk towards the light. So that's gone ahead and turned off. So I'm going to start walking towards the light here and there's nothing turned on just yet. So you can see I'm getting closer. I'm probably about a meter away from the post now and now it's just turned on. So I'm probably just about a meter away from the post and that's when it's gone ahead and turned on. I think the 45 degree angle bracket would be good for someone that's just come out of the door. So you walk out and it comes on straight away. But let's put the straight bracket on and see how that works out. So I've just quickly gone and changed it to the flat bracket. So you can see it's now pointing straight onwards. Um, you can't really tell at the time of day right about now how far the light is gonna throw, but once to do a test this evening, then we can have a look at how far that's going to throw. But the one thing I wanted to see is obviously on our previous test, the distance wasn't very good. I want to see if this makes a little bit more difference. I think it might because I've just seen it go off in the background and then come back on. So perhaps that might actually do that. So let's go ahead and test this out. So I've now installed the flat bracket on here. So it's straight up against the post, as you can see. Um, what we're going to do now is we'll walk a little bit away again as I'm as I probably said the chairs give or take five meters away from where the light is mounted so let's give that a go so I'm just going to walk off and have a quick look um, and see how much closer we get okay so the light's gone off now so I'm now going to walk towards the light 
um, and see when this picks me up. So I'm walking fairly straight onto it almost. And there we go, so it's picked me up about here. So I would say I'm about one and a half to 1.75 meters away from it. Um, and that seems to have picked me up. So I just wanted to give you the test of what it's like in a real world scenario. Generally, you wouldn't really use a motion sensored light during the day anyway, but this gives you a rough idea on how it works. But just while you're here, the last test we're gonna run during the day is we're gonna set up the camera. So a scenario like this would be um, you're walking into a dark corner. You don't want the you don't want to walk in while it's dark. So we've got a camera set up on the other side, which will then pick me up, which will then should trigger the light. So same again. We're going to walk around the corner. Um, you're probably going to see me walking around, and then you're going to see the light trigger just there. Now we've gone ahead and changed the settings to use this little G3 Flex as my motion detector. So this is gonna go ahead and act as my motion detector. So I'm gonna walk along, this is a fairly straight line. Uh, I'm gonna walk down here and see how far I need to come before this picks me up. Um, I have turned the sensitivity up um, on both of them to 100%, so I would try to get the maximum out of it. So I can see the light is still on. I don't know if you can actually hear me from back here. Um, this is about 50. 15, 20, 15 ish meters away, maybe a little bit more. Right, okay, I can see the light is off now. Um, so I'm gonna walk along here. I'm actually gonna walk a little bit tighter so I can see when the light turns on. Um, I'm just gonna keep walking. I'm about probably six, six meters, five meters, there we go. So that has picked me up from quite a distance. So. I would say about five meters. I am literally at 90 degrees to the sensor, so I'm pretty sure it's not the sensor picking me up because that only has a 120 degree view angle, or viewing angle, sorry. Um, so yeah, I mean, there you go. So that picked me up from about five meters away, which is what you would expect with the sensor on there. But like I said a few minutes ago, we're, or like I said a moment ago, we're gonna give this a go again at night. Hopefully it's gonna get a, uh, a bit darker um, at, the, at the moment here in the UK. Um, it gets dark at about quarter to 10, so around about 10 o'clock we'll hope that, that is, the sun has gone completely down and the skies are completely dark. So we'll give this a go a little bit later and um, we'll see what the results look like. So it's a little bit later at night now and it's a little bit more darker out here. So just to show you what I'm going to be doing, so I'm straight down the path again, so I'm going to come around the corner. Uh, not quite sure how much you can see of this, but I'm going to come around the corner here and then you can see the chair a little bit further down there. So. We'll run through the different ones here. Um, first, we'll have a look at the sensor on the camera. And then once we've done that, we'll have a look at some of the other ones. So the light's just gone off now and I'm gonna start walking towards this. This could be an example of you've just pulled up into the driveway and you need to walk down the side of the house and you're waiting for the light to come on. So I'm just a little bit closer than I was previously. So I'm probably about four meters away and it seems to have picked up the light and that's now come on. So when you come closer, and you come to walk around the corner just around here um, where I am, where I showed you earlier, that's where the light would be on automatically and you can just walk through. I've already gone ahead and deactivated the paired camera. So just here you can see I'm waving in front of this and you'll see on the other picture on the other side that the light is not coming on. So we're just gonna go ahead and test the other two setups. So I'm a little bit further away from the light now and the light has gone off, so I'm gonna start walking towards it. And I would say it's almost the same, maybe a little bit closer this time I was to the camera and you'll see the light that that's just come on. So the 45 degree angle, it doesn't, or the angled bracket, it doesn't really make too much of a difference in terms of day or night. Um, because I'm recording this, I do have a light on my face, but it's not made that much of a difference. So I'm gonna change it to the straight bracket and see if that makes any difference. Let's run through the final test then. So we've got the straight bracket on. Um, I'm about seven meters away from the post, so let's just keep walking towards it. Um, probably at the five meter mark now, and we'll keep going closer and closer. Oh, so this one's a little bit more. So this is probably about two and a half meters away um, from the light itself, and it's picked me up. So that's a little bit better. So you're probably better off having the straight bracket up so it projects the light out and the center's a little bit higher up. Just one final thing I wanna show you is actually how bright this light is at night. So this is at maximum brightness uh, and you can see it actually lights up the garden fairly well. Um, 
it probably covers about half of it, which is really good. So even if you're on a front driveway or if you're around the corner somewhere, this would really work really well. In my opinion, I think this is a really good start for a floodlight. The idea of using a camera to trigger the light is great. So if you have a camera elsewhere, it can trigger the light somewhere else. The sensor on the light itself is great for close proximity, but if you go more than a couple of meters away, you may need to reconsider the option of how you're gonna trigger the light. I hope you found this video useful. Again, remember to hit the like button, leave me a comment down below, and if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.